What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Triple H hires Marvel writer for WWE and Sammy Guevara destroys Andrade. Yeah, I've been seeing some stuff on social media. I guess Sammy Guevara and Andrade had a back and forth on Twitter. They got some heat against each other right now. I don't know what's going on with that specifically, but we're gonna check this out. And it's interesting to see uh, Triple H hiring a writer from Marvel to see maybe they could come up with some interesting ideas for um you know monday night raw friday night smackdown and maybe nxt who knows but we're gonna check out all this and other wrestling news let's get right into this video i'm excited about this see what wrestlemania has to offer us today what's going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including sammy guevara absolutely destroys Andrade on twitter wwe hires a marvel writer more white rabbit riddled is a superstar really injured and AEW star knows his days are coming to an end and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that right notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. But now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. Now, first story looks at Sammy Guevara charbroiling Andrade on Not Twitter. Char on top of today's news is some apparent backstage drama that's boiled over onto social media. Sammy Guevara isn't holding back with his thoughts about fellow AEW wrestler Andrade. The Spanish god recently took to Twitter after Andrade commented in an interview with Mas Alucha that Guevara complained to him about being too stiff in the ring. This led to Guevara tweeting, you didn't say sh to me, you liar, but here's some truth, you ungrateful prick. You'd mm. be jobless if it wasn't for your dad-in-law. Are you oh. really mad at me or mad at yourself for failing to get over for a second time? Oh. Let's go back to WWE. We all know you want to do an F off. Oh. Andrade responded with this love note. Okay, I'm a liar. See you on Wednesday. I'll tell you to your face again. And I think you say that you do not have any problem. Guevara's fiery response got fans talking and many oh, agreed damn. that regardless of the issue, Sammy won the social media melee. Well, let's hope this is a work as the last thing AEW needs is more backstage drama. Sammy spoke about the political problems during an episode of his vlog saying, There's just so much drama that goes on in wrestling. It's really exhausting. It's tiring. Seems like every couple of weeks is something I'm minding my own business on vacation. And then, you know, people want to start drama with me. It is what it is. It's the life I signed up for, I suppose. But it's definitely tiring and maybe I'll need to go on another vacation next week because <laughs> it's stressful. Is a three-time TNT champion experiencing backstage heat with another wrestler? Or is it all a work? What you guys think let us know in the comments down below yeah let, i don't know i don't know if this is a work it could be but aw they they it seems like there's something going on with within the the locker room with the roster it's like boys is not really getting along and you know their 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 frustrations are either getting leaked out on social media or you know they're telling it to the world on twitter or whatnot i, I don't know what's going on but he did bury my guy on Twitter. I ain't gonna lie to you. He charbroiled him real good. He cooked him well done on social media. So I don't know if it is a work or whatnot. Hopefully they ever sort things out, but God damn. Next up, WWE hires a Marvel writer. A recent Triple H hire is likely to have fans talking as the company recently brought in Marvel Comics writer Rob Fee. Hmm. Fee, whose comic writing credits include Daredevil, Spider-Man and the Avengers, has also written for The Ellen Show and various Disney shows including Player Select. Fee has also produced television shows such as Will Smith's Fresh Prince Reunion. He's also known for his work in the horror genre, so he sounds like a well-rounded acquisition. The new highest title is Director of Long-Term Creative. According to Fight for Select, he pitched a Fiend horror movie project before Bray Wyatt's release and has been working on the White Rabbit QR codes. Oh. He posted the good news on his LinkedIn page saying, Well, this is the most excited I've ever been to post on LinkedIn. This is my absolute dream job and the entire team is fantastic. If you think it's been well so far, just wait. And bringing Fee onto Team WWE seems like it's already paying off, especially in light of the White yeah. Rabbit storyline's wild success. Next up, more that's actually pretty cool. The white rabbit situation with the QR codes is actually a good way to most likely it seemed like it's going to be Bray. It's a good way to kind of incorporate him back into WWE. If this is the route they're going, I do like it. It, it, it 
I see it all the time in my chat. Oh, just QR code, QR code. Like people are actually paying attention to like really solve and decrypt these codes and what they mean or whatnot. So he's bringing some intrigue there. If that's part of his brainchild, and obviously he wanted to do something with Bray before WWE released him the first time around. So it's interesting to see where things will go. Um, it seems like he is a fan of wrestling. I've I've been one of those people that. Uh, have been on the side of if you're gonna have writers for the show they need to know what the hell wrestling is they need to know like the wrestling business in a sense of they need to have watched it in my opinion like it's it's kind of hard for a writer to come in blind they don't know anything about wrestling but they want to write a character and write storylines about wrestlers or wrestlers within a story so Hopefully, you know, he's well versed in his wrestling knowledge and, you know, um, how wrestling should be pitched. But it seems like he has a, a good idea of how things or should be going. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in the future storyline wise for uh, for the different shows. More White Rabbit riddles. Speaking of the WWE's bombastic bunny, Bray Wyatt recently added this tantalizing tagline to his Twitter account. A villain is just a victim from a different story. When mm. many fans confident that Bray Wyatt will be revealed as a mastermind behind the White Rabbit riddles, the WWE threw a red herring at the fans on NXT. Ringside News discussed a brief White Rabbit clue that aired on the most recent NXT. Mm. WWE dropped the White Rabbit tease during NXT tonight. While the company did not drop a QR code like it usually does, it tested a different formula with a tease. NXT star Joe Gacy dropped the White Rabbit emoji during the Grayson Waller Effect live Instagram session. Now they seem to think that WWE may and be people, trying to. People have been saying that, so it it, it could be it could be a, a a situation where they pull a swerve. Deflect the fans' suspicion from Wyatt to Gacy. And for those not in the know, Joe Gacy's name was mentioned in the QR code tease mm -hmm. that popped up on the screen during Raw last night. Fans speculated that it could be WWE's way of getting their attention away from the signs that point to Bray Wyatt making mm -hmm. his return at Extreme Rules. At this point, it seems unlikely that many fans will change their mind about who is driving the White Rabbit mystery. Indeed, if the WWE were to switch the rabbit's identity to Gacy just to fool them, it would be a major blunder. With fans of wrestling pundits theorizing the mystery will be solved at Extreme Rules, fans will have to wait until Saturday's pay-per-view before they get the answers they've been going bonkers over. Yeah, if it is Gacy, ah, uh, bro, the backlash. But once again, no one said it was going to be Bray. We just assume it would be Bray. But, once again, the backlash that they would still get, even though no one said it was going to be Bray, if it happens to be Joe Casey, people are going to be fucking pissed. Would I be pissed? Not so much. Because, once again, I, I think this is very cool how they're, they're teasing something. I'm just, me personally, i just rather see it happen than to get my hopes up for something and it doesn't happen. You know? So... Next up, main roster star bouncing back to NXT. Add Veer Mahan to the list of main roster superstars who have been moved to NXT. Oh, Mahan shit. was seen in the backstage segment on the 4th October episode of Black and Gold Brand. As Wrestling News' Paul Davis commented on the segment, Veer appeared after Sanga was shown talking with Nathan Frazier about the final slot in the North American title match that is scheduled for the Halloween Havoc show. The segment ended with Frazier leaving and Mahan and Sanga staring at each other. Davis speculated that Mahan will team up with Sanger and noted that the two have teamed up before. Oh. Wrestling News pointed out that Veer's monster push seemed to evaporate once Mr. McMahon left the WWE yeah. and Triple H took over. Davis added that it's unknown if the move means Mahan will only wrestle on NXT. What do you guys think of this move though? Let us know in the comments down below. You know it's crazy they had build up Veer was coming for like goddamn six, seven months. He got there. I mean, it was nothing spectacular. It hasn't been spectacular. Hell, if anybody needs to probably go back down to NXT, maybe is probably a uh, Omos. That experiment did not work. It's not working. So it's, it's, it's crazy. Like Vince just loved these larger than life guys. But when you see them in the ring, it's nothing special. It's just like we've seen this before. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Maybe they can find some better use for him in NXT and maybe bring him back to the main roster. Who knows? We will see. Next up, Chris Jericho. Fans didn't know who Cody Rhodes was. A controversial word from Chris Jericho is a former AEW champion recently claimed Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks were relatively unknown to US fans when AEW launched in 2019. 
The wizard appeared on the AEW Restricted podcast claiming, keep in mind no one really knew Cody at that point, he'd been gone for years. The last time we'd seen him, he was Stardust when he left WWE, and as much buzz as Kenny Omega and Matt Jackson had, they were still most just regional guys. They were worldwide stars, but when it comes to national TV in the States, they didn't have any experience with that. One of AEW's goals was to introduce US fans to talented wrestlers they may not be familiar with, but who could entertain with the best of so-called named talent. This panned out with the emergence of stars such as Darby Allin, MGF, Wardlow and Sammy Guevara. However, would fans have tuned into AEW without a main event star like Chris Jericho mm. headlining? Well, Jericho said, if I'm the bridge to get here, check me out and then look at all these other guys that we have. Would the company have happened if I wasn't there? Probably, but I don't think it would have grown as quickly as it did or maybe gotten off to such a huge start. While Jericho does make a good point, we're not so sure about his take on Cody Rhodes, a wrestler who didn't main event in WWE but was well known to US fans for his famous father and his run in WWE. Next yeah, up in and, and that's kind of where Jericho has a point because Jericho um, being in the company from the start, uh, I believe Jericho was the first AEW world champion. It made sense. People knew who Jericho was. But at the same time, People also knew who Cody was. Not, I don't think you can, not as much, but they know Dusty Rose. They know his father. They know Dustin. Um, it's just he wasn't, I guess you could say, as big as um, Jericho in a mainstream sense. When you think of wrestlers, like people that used to watch wrestling back in the Attitude Era that don't watch it now, they wouldn't really know who Cody Rose is. They may know who Dustin is. Gold dust, but they wouldn't know who Cody Rose is as much. They may know his father or whatnot, but they wouldn't automatically associate with, oh, I know who that guy is. But when you see Jericho, I'll be like, oh, I know who that guy is, you know? So he has a point there, but at the same time, I do believe Cody did have a a solid fan base where just a, a, enough of pe enough amount of people actually knew who he was, his, his family, his lineage. AEW star knows his days are numbered. With wrestlers reportedly requesting their releases from AEW, what should fans make of a top AEW star stating, I know my days are numbered? Now if you're wrestling, great sting is just an instance of knowing that you can't beat father time. The stinger recently spoke with Sports Illustrated's Justin Barrasso, recalling the epic moment when rival wrestler The Great Muta helped him and Darby Allin out against the House of Black during an episode of Rampage. That was a moment I had flashbacks when he stepped into the ring. Seeing him face to face, it took me back in time. The man called Sting talked about how Muta and him are closing out an era as they work their last matches. I know my days are numbered, so I'm trying to make the most out of my time left and give the fans everything I have before this wave comes into shore for good. I'm grateful that Muta was able to be here with me in the US. That's a memory I'm going to hold on to and it signifies the end of our era. I'm looking forward to having one last grand hurrah with the great Muta, especially in Japan. Mm. The Stinger Muta had some fantastic matches in WCW in 1989 when they clashed over the WCW World Television Championship. And now the two former opponents are scheduled to team up for a six-man match in Japan. Next up, is a superstar really injured? Or would a wrestling promotion try and fool the fans about an injury? While we don't want to be perceived as maligning the integrity of the WWE, Fightful Select recently commented on Montez Ford's apparent injury, raising the possibility it could be a kayfabe injury. Mm. We haven't heard if Montez Ford's injury is legitimate or not, but we can confirm that the walking boot was actually brought in by the prop department on Monday. Mm. While Ford accompanied tag team partner Angelo Dawkins during Dawkins' match against the Bloodline Sola Sokoa, he wasn't able to do much of anything to deal with Bloodline members Jay and Jimmy Uso, not to mention Henri Oost Sami Zayn from interfering in the match. And finally, Alicia hmm, Fox gets engaged. And last but not least, congratulations to former WWE superstar Alicia Fox oh, on her recent engagement. A 36-year-old Fox, aka Victoria Crawford, ironically debuted on the main roster as a wedding planner. She went on to become the first and only African-American Divas champion after defeating Maurice in a fatal four-way. She was last seen in a WWE ring in the 2022 Royal Rumble. Many congratulations to Alicia Fox and her fiance. Hey man, that's awesome, folks, man. The wildest Congrats news to story. her, man. That's pretty fucking cool. Uh, the whole Montez situation, that's pretty interesting. If this is like a work, I'm not sure what they're doing with Montez. Uh, 
we will see you in the upcoming weeks and uh yeah man this is this was a pretty interesting video the whole sammy guevara situation i know they had a back and forth i didn't know how brutal sammy went on twitter uh against andrade so i'm not sure if this is a work or if this is another backstage situation in aew but comment down below let me know if you guys have any more information on the sammy guevara situation how do y'all feel about triple h hiring a marvel writer do you think that would help the shows overall and do you think this whole white rabbit situation is bray wyatt or joe gacy do you think they're just putting like a they're, they're trying to pull a swerve to try to keep people to not predict predict this whole situation being bray or y'all sticking it's with it's bray wyatt and they're just trying to pull a swerve they're trying to confuse people let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 100k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace